Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show special holiday edition. Merry Christmas, Hosma Hanukkah, or whatever you may be celebrating out there. Uh, and Happy New Year as well. We still got the tree hung with care from our Christmas celebrations. Uh, thank you, Jen Carlins, for the wonderful Mayhem Tree craft over here. Uh, it's mostly survived the holidays. Uh, but with us, we're going to talk Mexican wrestling and uh yeah there's gonna be a little bit of lucha underground in there as well so i mean there's there's some great stuff i know we all got excited about what's happening in japan over this last year but over on the uh, wrestling mayhem show facebook group i've been exposed to mexican wrestling that isn't on the l ray network and it's been really exciting i figured let's uh let's do a deep dive into this for you guys that are looking for that alternative maybe it's not in our own borders maybe you need to look somewhere else and uh, i want to make sure you guys have all the options in front of you um, alternatively, if there's somebody that's a super, super, super expert on like Japanese wrestling, I think we have a few in here. We might do another special sometime. We want a week off somewhere else on the line as well. But with me, first of all, uh, let's let's go let's go in order of proximity here. Eamon Payton, he's the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling, coming at us from San Antonio, Texas. Yes, indeed. The proximity in the sense of of both of the other people here on the show are very far away from Sork. There you go. There you go. You're the closest to me right now. So if, if I have my <laughs> geography right. And also with us, he's a man behind the wrestlingrevolution.com. He's Antonio Garza. Often you see him as hashtag heel Garza on, on our, on our, uh, uh, if you're joining us here at Tuesday nights on our live streams, usually thank you for joining us. Oh, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I've been wanting to talk Lucha Libre ever since I started following the show, and I finally get to do it. So <laughs> it's, 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 this is my Christmas present. <laughs> and, I and I don't think we mentioned, uh, speaking of, you're in El Paso, which is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yes. is right on the border. So you are literally the closest person to the source material we're talking about today. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm in El Paso. I am uh, 50 minutes away from crossing to, to Ciudad Juarez, which is over in Mexico. So I, I, I did grow up uh, watching a lot of Lucha Libre, uh, as you know, like Eddie Guerrero and the girl are here from El Paso. So uh, the, they were running shows since I was a little bit. So I, I, I've been exposed to, to Lucha Libre all my life. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So he is he is definitely the source to talk about this. And and, and, and Eamon, like, at least like, you, you grew up in, in Cor- Corpus Christi. You, you have to have had a bit. I don't know, uh, uh, across the border on local TV or something, or, or, or something like that. You, you've had a little, little, little bit of exposure too, right, in some fashion? But definitely. I mean, from where I was, a lot of uh, and, and, and that kind of stuff that really did showcase a lot of AAA and a lot of CMLL. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, traditionally, you get, you get lucha in, in South Texas, but it's not necessarily the lucha you would expect. Like, like the, the, I'll say it's the good lucha. <laughs> Um, it's, it's much different. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I definitely, uh, I remember as a kid just flipping through channels when I was getting into wrestling and, and seeing a metal or triple A would usually be on at like three or four in, in the afternoon on like a Sunday. So, mm-hmm. and, and, and for, for context, my earliest uh, exposure to Lucha is, uh, sometime in the late nineties when we got, finally got a, a satellite dish, uh, we had Univision. And Chachi and I would sit there and watch uh, 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 the Lucha every once in a while on Saturdays when we catch it. I mean, it, it was a handful of times. We really were not able to get into it. But I know we saw some people we were familiar with and had been exposed to from, like, WCW. Uh, and before that, ECW really was a big thing to introduce Lucha wrestling to us in the States. And, uh, and, and I think at, the, at first, I think we need to acknowledge that, you know, yeah. that, that that was kind of a big introduction for a lot of us, I think, that weren't you know, had the proximity that, that, that you guys have. So, um, so I, I think the first bridge here is, you know, obviously we've been talking about Lucha Underground. Chris De, De Joseph, producer of the show, um, uh, uh, joined us on the Indie Mayhem show a few, a uh, couple months ago and an amazing discussion about what they're doing with the show there. And that is again, kind of more of an introductory thing to, you know, and they have people from Mexico, from these Mexican promotions, 
uh, really representing on the show, mixed with the people that we're familiar with, maybe from WWE or or, or indies in the area or, or something like that. Um, uh, uh, Garza, tell me, tell me, um, w- you know, how relatable is that to what you are seeing in Mexico? Uh, or coming out of Mexico, and uh, you know, is that a good kind of introductory for people to to Lucha Libre today if they're just kind of being exposed to it? I think it's a, a perfect introduction right now because uh, in, in Mexico you don't really get like product like the Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground is unique, like the U.S., Mexico, Japan, and everywhere in the world. But what Lucha Underground did for Mexican wrestling is make a bridge between. Wrestlers that otherwise you wouldn't really get to see in, in the U.S. anymore. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, Pentagon, Ju- uh, Pentagon Jr., Phoenix, uh, Neil Mortis, who actually wrestles as as the CS, who we actually saw in TNA, but TNA did a terrible job at introducing <laughs> CS to us. Uh, we even got like a Blue Demon and, and even uh, Alberto Patron, like in his new like Mexican style wrestling, you know. And we, we live in a, in a time in the U.S. where there's so much wrestling that it's just not as easy to bring in, like, luchadors from, from Mexico into other promotions. Uh, we, we know for a fact that the WWE tries to introduce uh, Lucha Libre, but they have to do it in small doses, and they obviously will manage their own characters. Uh, TNA has uh, Tigre Uno, but... Again, it's small doses, and we don't really get to Lucha Libre uh, as a match. We just see Tigre Uno versus the other guys. Mm-hmm. So Lucha Underground was was great in order to to bring not only characters that are actually happening in Mexico, but the Lucha Libre style itself. And I think that that's the the, the biggest thing that happened for Mexico this year that Lucha Underground opened the doors for fans to, to dwell into to Mexican Lucha. Uh, I, I would also say that Lucha Underground, I feel, has done a great job of sort of educating people on on really the history of Lucha Libre and an understanding of the sort of concepts that go into Lucha Libre. Uh, we mentioned it when Krista uh, uh, Joseph was on the show, but there was, once was a, a project that tried to do something similar uh, called Lucha Libre USA. And it was very much an uh, Americanized version of Lucha Libre. It was very Mm -hmm. much, there were a few Lucha guys, but it was still an American style of show. Um, This, I think, utilizes a lot more of what you would see on like a AAA or CMLL as far as like, uh, you know, just just like certain things like like the importance of like masks and stuff like that and and the um, the sort of uh, culture that goes into the into the wrestling and then obviously the actual Lucha Libre style of wrestling. Um, uh, obviously there are some American characters on Lucha Underground, but it all still falls under that Lucha Libre style. And I think has done a, a much better job, like uh, Tony was saying, of bridging that gap between uh, Lucha in, in Mexico and sort of bringing it to uh, other markets. Certainly. And if you're interested, the Lucha Libre USA is actually available on Hulu. I, I think the entire season of it, if you want to go see what that was about. And yeah, that's something I know uh, we were talking about. I know I watched some of the early episodes of that. And again, it just didn't really stick out. And I think, Eamon, you went to like some of the live shows they did, right? They did a live show once in Corpus uh, in like a ball field, in one of our minor league ball fields. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and it was, I mean, it was it was fine, but it wasn't Lucha. I mean, it wasn't a, a Lucha Libre sort of style show they had i believe blue demon was a part of that uh and and stuff like that but it was always it was very much an american style of wrestling Mm -hmm. um uh i remember this is a long time ago i'm probably like 2004 2005 but there was like a really small like like lucha like actual lucha show that wasn't like televised or for any major promotion or whatever uh that happened in corpus christi that i remember going to and that was much more of the style of Lucha Libre as to what you would see in, in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, just the way the show was paced and and matches and stuff like that, as opposed to the more Americanized version. So what you, we were talking, I think we're talking a lot about the Americanized versus the actual, this is what Lucha Libre is. 
uh, and and even even like what kind of what Lucha Underground uh, represents. What in your minds, you know, being exposed to the actual thing? I mean, we're I'm getting the filter up here, you know. I'm you know, the Lucha Libre USA, whatever WCW uh, Professor Mike Tanay tells me is, is is what Lucha Libre is to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is the difference between? Uh, you spoke a little bit to it, kind of more in depth. Why why should I seek the real lucha versus this Americanized version? What does it bring to the table? It's so different. I would particularly say it's it's more of an art, like a performance art. We we usually hear that about wrestling uh, everywhere, but uh, I I think uh, in in some way, like American like wrestling is like theater. And Lucha Libre is more like ballet because it, it's Lucha Libre is not about taking bumps. It's about flying and landing as soft as you can. Yeah. And that a lot of people say that makes it look, uh, I guess, more fake than normal wrestling. But it, it's it's a different style. It looks, I, I personally, it just looks uh, like prettier, uh, like gymnastics, pretty much, and. And and the same thing applies to all the rest of the wrestling. There's psychology. There's different types of psychology. Uh, but there's uh, you, you can go hardcore. You can go high risk. You can go super technical. Uh, well, once you see your first technical wrestling match uh, in Mexico, uh, the the type of submissions they have there they're just they're so convoluted, but they look beautiful and. Mm-hmm. Some, some of them actually do look painful. Uh, so I just think that, that's to, to me my, my difference. Uh, there's not, it's not much about the story they're telling you outside the ring, but more about the story they're telling you inside the ring. Yeah, no, and, and I agree. I agree completely. Especially this, like, there is, like, there is story in Lucha Libre, but it's a little bit of a, uh, it's not the main sort of focus, I guess. Uh, I think Tony spoke here perfectly where it's more, it's more ballet kind of based and, and it's more about the pageantry, I would say. Obviously, you have these, you know, these mass characters that all have their different personas, and they're colorful, or they're, you know, you know, they're 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 very uh, visual. And because of that, that sort of has to translate as well into the wrestling. Um, I would say for people that are like sort of uh, wanting to figure out like sort of the immediate style of lucha libre, but uh, sometimes like obviously we mentioned sort of mentioned a lot with like. Japanese wrestling sometimes it can get lost in translation. Um, I think one of the one of the closest American promotions that has sort of done a great job of sort of teaching the style of lucha libre to, to American fans would be Chikara, especially in their early stages. Uh, a lot of it was influenced by lucha libre style, uh, particularly uh, Skyda, uh, who uh, had a lot of role in teaching some of the uh, the Chikara Wrestle Factory students. Um, uh, it's definitely a lot of that. Like, like Tony said, less bumping, a lot more. Uh, you see a lot of arm drag based stuff, a lot of flying, a lot of uh, sort of high, quick pace sort of stuff, uh, as opposed to sort of get knocked down, sell, you know, that kind of aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, that 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 kind of be the best way to kind of sort of describe it. Certainly. Yeah. Um, so so what. If I'm looking at Mexican wrestling, what are the big things? What's the landscape down there? Is there like, you know, we, we know there's New Japan uh, wrestling that's kind of the WWE of Japan. What does the landscape look like uh, south of the border here? Well, this year, 2015, was a crazy, crazy year for, for Lucha <laughs> on, uh, Libre. Uh, we did not only have Lucha on the ground, as we were talking about, uh, breaking the gap. But uh, we had our, our two big promotions, which are CMLL, which is the Consejo Mundial de Lucha Libre. And that is the oldest wrestling promotion in the world. Uh, they started in 1933. Uh, wow. And we have AAA, uh, which is uh, the, like the, the big sports entertainment promotion in Mexico. So j- just to put it in perspective, uh, uh, this is the way I see it. Triple A is WWE, the show that has the spectacle, fireworks. They have the big stars, but it's not always the best in ring product. And then you have CMLL, which is which is kind of like TNA, unfortunately. They have the best wrestlers in Mexico, 
but it's terribly booked. Like <laughs> terribly, terribly booked. Wow. And yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm pulling up some footage here of uh, AAA. I think it's a triple mania that I'm showing here. And it's like all the entrances and looking at the set and the set has that very large scale, like in a different way that WWE does. Like that, I, I, I think it's very relatable to uh, how, how new Japan does their sets a little bit. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of colors, a lot of different shapes. There's like, do, am I seeing like dancing girls or something out there as well? Is yeah, that they, happening? They have ballets and dancing girls all the time. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, it look it looks like a spectacle. It doesn't look like, you know, I don't know the dungeon arena thing that, that I think a lot of people think of when they think Mexican wrestling, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and, and yeah. I, which is, which is something I kind of sort of like when I first started watching like Telemundo and Univision and stuff like that to see Mexican wrestling, it was a lot of that. Like it was a lot of, uh, a lot of like, like sort of the lower arenas, a lot of like, like air horns in a crowd and like stuff mm-hmm. like, like it, it felt very like, uh, it felt small. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, AAA, I think, has really done a great job of sort of creating a, a presentation with it all, as, as you're seeing, you know, the, mm-hmm. uh, the, the whole look of AAA seems, you know, like, like, a, like a WWE kind of, you know, product. Right, right. Yeah. The big reason for that is that CMLL being the, like, such an old promotion, they have a, the booker is really, like, old school. Mm-hmm. So, like I was saying, that, like, they're pretty much like TNA. They have amazing talent, terrible booking, uh, but they kind of want to be the NWA. Uh, they want to keep everything super uh, old school, super traditional, and that's why you don't really uh, see all the, the pyro and the, the show like you see in AAA. Uh, I think that's the main, the, the big difference. Uh, TMLL is not trying to be WWE or, or AAA for that matter. Uh, they're trying to be CMLL. Mm. I'm pulling up some uh, some some footage from Undercar. I say there, and even AAA is the is the six sided ring. This is the four corners. Uh, yes. You know, like like it's, it's kind of opposite. It's kind of opposite in that in that 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 vein um, um, for for our promotions. Uh, but but no, yeah. Again, it's kind of like the dark arena. There's not much to it. Um, you know, it looks like it's, it looks great in the ring uh, and everything. But it, it definitely feels like it definitely feels lesser in in in, in comparison. Man, NXT feels bigger than this. <laughs> to be honest, but uh, no, yeah, certainly. Uh, so, so I don't know what. So, you know, what? What's the attraction for you of each? Uh, well, like I was saying, like like Triple A is a big spectacle show. I like to see it because you have the big stars. Uh, you have Rey Mysterio. This year you had uh, Alberto Patron, Miss Testes. You have Brian Cage. Right now, I, I think uh, for the title soon, it's going to be Rey Mysterio versus Johnny Mundo, a.k.a. John Morrison. Uh, now that we have Lucha on the ground, uh, we also have Phoenix. We have uh, Messias. We have uh, Pentagon Jr., Arrow Star. All those guys are, are out there. So... Triple A is a show that I watch because I want to see the characters, because I want to see what those guys are doing. Uh, on the other hand, you have CLL who has uh, like guys like La Sombra who just got signed by WWE. You have Rush, you have Atlantis, Ultimo Guerrero, uh, which are all, all workforces. CLL right now has a bunch of all-timers. Uh, Atlantis is reaching like 50 years. Negro Casas is also like 50 years. But they're workhorses. They're, they are like, I don't know who I can, I guess they're like at the level of Sting where they can still put a, a, a five star match uh, assuming they're fighting the right person. Mm-hmm. And and that, that's the best thing about, about CMLL. Like in their big shows this year, AAA had a terrible show. Uh, Right, wrestling wise, they only had like two good matches, and the CMLL in their anniversary show, while it was certainly good, like I said, uh, mm-hmm. their matches are match of the year contenders. Wow, and, and that's like the big difference between those guys. This is this is sounding more and more like TNA WWE of like 2008 than anything. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like... That, that's why I was making that comparison because I feel I think we all feel that way about TNA that mm-hmm. they're just amazing wrestlers, but. We we don't agree with the booking. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and I think I, th- I think that kind of goes uh, like the way I see. I follow more AAA personally, but I think that's also because of the fact that I became such a fan of Lucha Underground, and most of the stars that you see on on Lucha Underground come from AAA, and, and you see a majority of them in AAA. Um, uh, CML, like like uh, Tony mentioned, like definitely has a lot of great quality performance and great quality uh, you know matches. So I wouldn't throw it completely out as far as you know whether you should watch it or not it's definitely something you should definitely check out um but yeah if you're more it's more the style of wrestling thing you want presentation as opposed to the internet Mm -hmm. so tell me so so obviously you guys proximity helps for you guys to to become part of this but i'm up in pittsburgh mike's up in new york we got our friend over in, in 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 california or wherever else how can i uh get into all this stuff how accessible is this uh, you know, I mean, we got we got a, a wrestling kingdom out of Japan. You know, having an English broadcast team uh, with with Stryker and, and Jim Ross this year. Um, how accessible is it for me to get into the, the, the these brands? Well, to, to start off, uh, both promotion CMLL and uh, AAA, and actually some of the the smaller Mexican indies, they all usually upload their shows to YouTube. Like even their very very fair reviews. Really? So. Yeah, if you want to watch the show, you can always uh, like they always, they always like leave a month behind, so you have like chance to to buy still buy the pay per view. But uh, you can go to YouTube and look up uh, Lucha Lucha Play or I think it's CMLL's uh, channel, and you'll have a bunch of shows. Uh, unfortunately, only AAA has done um, English broadcasting mm-hmm. for their big uh, Triple Mania pay per view. And as as you may have heard in the reviews, uh, they have a terrible audio. So oh no! <laughs> it may not be the best option to to for that to be your your first exposure. But um, so you have the the YouTube option. Uh, furthermore, CMLL does uh, pre broadcasting on the internet uh, of their Friday shows because they, they always run a show on Friday. That's their thing. And AAA does the does do pay per view, IP pay per view, and pay per view. Uh, I think they do. I, I guess Sky. I'm not really sure which uh, which network they do it here in the U.S. But uh, both both companies do pay per views like around for ten bucks. So maybe if you have the free time and ten bucks is not as much as buying a, a fifty dollar pay per view for another promotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I think that's the, the easiest way to access it. Uh, obviously, to reach on the ground is in El Rey and hopefully Unima. So I'm not sure they're they're going to be in Unima this year. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the best way. That's awesome. And and and, 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 and also, how does um you know not knowing any Spanish uh, how how if, if it doesn't have English uh, commentary, it, it, it's pretty. You, you still pretty much get the idea, right? Yeah, to, to be completely honest, uh, the they, they do uh, play-by-play commentary, mm-hmm. but they're really similar to Dada Louis commentary, where they just like jump around everywhere with storylines and, and calling moves and everything. So it, it's not like you're missing a lot. Uh, most of the matches. Like, like we were saying, they're not fully storyline driven, so you can just enjoy them for, for just the fact of being wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like at, at most you'll miss promos because they do uh, a lot of promos in ring. Uh, but even then, like they're usually the same promo as oh, "I want to challenge for your mask," and "No, we will not challenge for the mask." <laughs> Stuff like that. So you're not missing a lot. <laughs> okay okay there's not we're not we're not missing a giant paul Heyman uh uh style 15 minute soliloquy on why uh why brock lesnar is amazing uh in in, in espanol at this point right uh, it's not yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's something you, you, you won't really find it in mexico which will really like the long 20 minute promos or, or pipe bombs like like cm punk or paul Heyman. right uh you, you may see little interviews here and there but nothing they usually do their their storyline be uh, wrestling and not necessarily a uh, promo. Mm-hmm. Even in the ring. That's good. Hey, the universal language, right? I think that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So, um, but I don't know. What do you think, Eamon? Fairly accessible regardless of the language barrier? 
Uh, I would agree, and because especially like the, like how Tony mentioned, like if you're really if the really thing that only needs to be changed really for you is like the promo stuff. A lot of usually subtitling usually works pretty well for me in that kind of in that kind of realm. Um, as far as another point, I think with accessibility, as far as lucha libre goes, uh, even going beyond just your sort of regular lucha libre promotion, I feel the best thing about like lucha underground bridging the gap, as we mentioned before, is that a lot of the uh, stars we see from AAA and from Mexico uh, have grown great followings in America and are wrestling more in America now than ever before. Um, particularly the ones I could, obviously, Pentagon Jr., Drago, uh, Aerostar, and Phoenix, I think are the ones that really have kind of grown an American following or are getting booked more in America nowadays. Um, they wrestled for Pro Wrestling Guerrilla uh, recently with the Battle of Los Angeles. Uh, Chikara had a uh, AAA team wrestle for them. Uh, even companies like uh, AAW in Chicago recently had Pentagon and Phoenix work that work uh, their promotion. Um, so it definitely is, if you want to particularly see Lucha Libre stars and sort of the bigger stars in Lucha Libre the more popular stars, uh, it's now more accessible than ever, even if you're, you know, for your American indie, you know. Definitely, definitely keep an eye out for all those. So what's the, what's the first thing I should do? I, I'm actually going through, I feel like, I don't know, I'm going to have a lot of Spanish in my feeds in the next couple of days because uh, <laughs> I, I'm going hitting up all the Instagrams and everything and just going ahead and hit like and follow and everything like that. First thing, if you want to uh, bridge uh, beyond Lucha Underground, what's the first thing you guys think I should go look at, follow, whatever the case may be? I think you're already watching Lucha Underground, the easiest thing is to watch uh, AAA because mm-hmm. You, you'll be able to relate to the characters that you already know because they're actually the same exact characters with the exception of Messias, who's uh, who's not Mil Muertes in AAA, and King Cuerno works as a guy called El Hijo del Fantasma in AAA. I think those two are the, the only differences, but you still get your sexy star, your permanent junior, your Phoenix, and they're, they're sad same characters. Uh, like Rey Mysterio is going to be Rey Mysterio here and everywhere in the world. Uh, so I think triple A's is right now the easiest way to, to make that, uh, to make the jump. And once you, you start getting accustomed to the style of Lucha Libre, you, you can jump to CMLL and see Lucha Libre done like in, in a more traditional like style. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, oh, a side note, I'm just kind of noticing this right now because I'm going through the CMLL, CMLL uh, Facebook page. And uh, I don't know if this just got rolled out or anything, but uh, Facebook is automatically translating some of the posts. Um, oh, really? That's awesome. And there's ones that you can hit the button and they'll, they'll translate them. So uh, there's a little tip for you guys if you want to kind of follow what's going on here. Uh, that That's cool. Even the comments. I can respond to the comments. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's kind of cool. Uh, what about you, Eamon? What do you think for, for kind of dipping the toe in on here? Uh, I would definitely agree with Tony if if you have watched at least the you know if the majority of your Lucha Libre watching so far is Lucha Underground. Triple A is the best to sort of you know not feel like you're going into something completely new. Um, uh, definitely a lot of their uh, uh, I, I would say even their, their obviously uh, the recent uh, uh, Triple Mania wasn't uh, some would say wasn't that successful. <laughs> Uh, especially with audio issues and, and various uh, various problems with, in that department, um, but I would still do do your best to try to AAA. Like I said, would would probably be your best bet as far as, as far as getting into things. CMLL, uh, I like I said, don't don't you know uh, not watch it obviously, but uh, if you want, don't be you may you know have some things lost on you as far as characters and, and stuff like that goes, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, obviously, in the day and age that we live in now, it's it's more accessible than ever. So, awesome, awesome. Anything else? Any other advice? Anything else we should check out? What are we missing in the world of Lucha Libre here for the for the for the uninitiated? Uh, there, there's I guess there's not much else to talk about uh, unless we want to like delve into the actual stories that are going on. Uh, if you're a big fan already of New Japan Pro Wrestling, they do have a strong, strong, strong relationship with CMLL. Uh, they actually exchange guys right now. CMLL has this guy called Kamaitachi, which I'm thinking is going to be the rookie of the year uh, for 2015. And he's doing his like his 
off season year in CMLL, he's going back to New Japan. Uh, likewise, uh, Masca Dorada from CMLL is in New Japan. So there, there's a lot of relation there. If you're really a fan of New Japan, uh, be sure to watch their Fantastic Mania uh, series of shows because that's pretty much a CMLL versus New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, tour yes. they do. And that's right after Wrestle Kingdom, if I'm not mistaken. So that's also a, a good connection you can do right now. Awesome. Awesome. I, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, uh, again, Eamon Payton, at Eamon2, please, on the Twitters. Antonio Garza of the Wrestling Uh I, I think it was good. You know, we got to reach out a little bit and show there's more. If, if you're tired of WWE, there are alternatives. If you're tired of English wrestling, <laughs> there are alternatives. If you're liking this mask stuff, if you like, hey, is there more than just Chikara? Because I dig that. We'll see where they got the idea too. Uh, and I think even even Chikara, I think we can throw out there as an option for people who want to kind of dive into a version of this. If you like, like, like I, I, I feel like if you like Lucha Underground, you may also like Chikara. Yeah, because it takes it takes a lot of those aspects of of character driven stuff, sort of larger than life sort of personalities, right? Uh, and right. and you know, putting them in more of an Americanized sort of show. Exactly, and okay. storytelling. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, big time, big time. And we've had some deep conversations about that, uh, especially over on Indie Indie Mayhem show. Uh, the episode we had with Bryce. Uh, Bryce Rensberg, mm-hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago on uh, Indie Mayhem Show 99. Uh, we touched a lot on that and with uh, Alex Cars, who does the uh, 15 Minutes, uh, I'm sorry, Chikar and 15 Minutes podcast uh, about that and, and, and the ride that they get to go on for something like that. I think it's taken to a different level. Also, uh, while we're talking about that, uh, if you have not yet, um, look up the uh, from Ignite Philly. Mike Quackenbush did a, uh, about a 10 minute talk oh, there yes. about why wrestling is art. I don't even care if you don't care about wrestling or whatever the case may be. Uh, well, if you're getting this far, you probably care a little bit about wrestling in this mm-hmm. show. Uh, but or share it with your friends that don't understand wrestling. Just like here, just take ten minutes, see if you get it after this. And I think it's tremendous. Um, Ignite yeah. Philly, Mike Quackenbush. Uh, I believe it's wrestling is art, or the art of wrestling is, is yeah, what he calls the it. The art of pro wrestling, I think, is what it's called. But yeah, if you find uh, look up like Night Philly on on YouTube, uh, right? It's, it's like like every video on their channel has maybe like a hundred so views. This is up to like ten thousand or something. Exactly, some good good stuff. So please go check that out. Thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, let us know if you're getting into Mexican wrestling. Uh, let us know what you're what you're watching, what you think about it at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show on the Facebook group, and or, or on the Facebook itself. And uh, we'd like to hear from you. Good times at Wrestling. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thank you to our Patreon subscribers. Again, we're not going to charge our Patreons for this this week. This is our gift to you, uh, and to, including you, Antonio Garza. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> this is my gift. It's my Christmas gift. Your Christmas <laughs> gift. You don't have to pay for the show you're on. That's that gets weird. Uh, but anyways, yeah. but uh, <laughs> thank you so much for that, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.